The darkness of the novel has always interested me. And yes, I think there's positives about both of the Pet Cemetery movies, but none of them truly hit the themes like the book does. But this kind of got me thinking about the Mary Lambert era. So today, let's step back into the Stephen King universe and talk about one hell of a black sheep. Let's discuss Pet Cemetery 2. And I know the first movie has developed quite the following. It has that great 30th anniversary Blu-ray edition that came out. And listen, I'm the first one to tell you that the sequel has its fair share of issues. It does. As much as I'm going to be defending it here, I can admit the story is disjointed. You know, some of the character decisions are inept. And some of the dialogue could be a bit corny. The first day of school is always the hardest. You're not my mother. Here's the thing. In the end, I prefer part two over the original any day and have quietly been arguing in favor of it since my youth. But here's the thing, in fairness, I would like to extend an olive branch and admit that I am in the small minority here. I mean, there's probably like two of us out there, max. So, you know, shout out to the other guy who likes this better. In fact, this explains it better than I ever could. Where the fuck you get off talking to people about me behind my back going over my head? What people? What people would you think I wasn't going to find out? Okay, well that's it. I mean, bipartisanship is done with and uh, that's all I can offer. So, here we go. Hey, is anybody left? Well, I'm going anyway. Let's talk about something important. Part 2 is just better. Totally more entertaining. And overall, it's a better and wilder ride. And I guess just to be clear real quick, my issues with the first movie have nothing to do with the novel. In fact, I think just for this review, as of right now, it doesn't exist. Only these two films, for right now, nothing more. Now, the original shares many of the same problems as its sequel. Uh, in terms of dealing with death, Anthony Edwards is unenthusiastic. It's true, and portrays grief as being sort of indifferent, but I tend to believe he has more regression than that of Lewis Creed. I mean, this is Lewis Creed pre-Gage's death. Honey, church will be fine. You know, I can take a look at that for you. I thought you might have. I know you don't approve of the subject. And post. John, I buried my son today. If something good doesn't come from Gage's death, I think. And I mean, listen, I'll be honest. I mean, if Xanax was a movie, it'd probably be Pet Cemetery. But here's the thing. The first movie is a better story with heavier and more relatable themes. Grief, death, and dealing with loss are done better here. But honestly, nothing is developed in a way that hits like it should. I mean, listen, if you want to deal with grief, look to Lindelof. Will I forget him? Never. And I know the time wasn't right in 1989, and I do not blame Mary Lambert. She's an excellent director working within the confines of a time and place. The late 80s was just not the perfect time to tell these kinds of stories. But a lot of it does come down to Stephen King not being the best screenwriter. He's a brilliant novelist, absolutely, but I think when it comes to his adaptations, I'd prefer him to be an advisor only. The medium of books and movies are just a very different beast. And how the sequel goes about this ends up being a better time. This sequel is dark, but it also embraces more of its B-movie charm. I think of the first two Pet Cemetery movies in relation to the Jaws series. Pet Cemetery 2, in this instance, is Jaws 2. It leans a tad more into the action. It acknowledges that this has happened before. And so was Creed's cat. That, that's a shark. And I know what a shark looks like because I've seen one up close. It puts more focus on the villain. We still get the loss of a loved one dealing with how shitty life must be afterwards. But here we get the added element of dark humor. Nothing is necessarily played for laughs, but there is some morbid fun to be had. <laughs> we get a heavy 90s feel to this. And being only three years apart from the 89 original, it's kind of fascinating to see how much has changed. I mean, let's be really, really honest here. Grunge hit hard. Whereas part one was more grounded, with the exception of a little kid looking like a circus trainer and with an adorable little scar, when he should have looked more like this. Part two flirts with a bit of surrealism. A perfect example is that weird dog hybrid sex scene. I mean, look at the way the colors are used in this. Far more exaggerated. Look at this stage I am led to believe is a graveyard. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. When's the last time you've been to a graveyard? 
You can clearly see the MTV era influence all over Pet Cemetery 2. And you know what? It's amazing. Yes, it does date this. It absolutely dates this. But it's so focused in its execution, it works out perfectly. And everything great here is tied to the man himself, Captain Hadley. That's it. Step aside, Mert. This fucker's having himself an accident. Clancy Brown is the scene stealer Sheriff Gus Gilbert. Now, part one had Judge Chamberlain Haller chewing up the scenery as a wise old man Judd, and of course, as the only lively character. Has anyone ever buried a person up there? And you know me. When I get scared, I get defensive. His performance in Hammy Main Accent was so iconic, it has become a parody in the pop culture zeitgeist. And deservedly so. All issues aside, Judd rocks this man. And in part two, Gus is sort of the bizarro Judd in a way. Thick main accent. I live just across the road. Your mother spent the last hour cooking. Now you stop being a little jerk. Lifelong townie. Instead of helping with the aging burial, he is the one that gets buried. And if one thing's clear on screen, it's that Clancy is having fun here. He isn't cutting the tension, he's embracing it. Why did you dig up my wife? Because <laughs> I wanted to fuck her. Scene stealing son of a bitch, I love him. And when talking about Pet Cemetery 2, there's one thing that sticks out as a major change that lends itself to this more MTV horror genre thing. It's how different the ones who come back are. Arguably inconsistent in both films. Mostly in part one, the people that come out of the ground are pure evil. Gage and Rachel went straight for the kill. Yet how things are handled with Gus and somewhat Renee, it's not so black and white. You bury your own. To me, it's far more interesting that Gus is sort of learning how to live again with this sort of dark edge. He seems like an entity that isn't quite sure how being human works. He is still evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's playing a long con. The rape scene is difficult, but that alone shows that there's much more going on than just kill, kill, kill. Gus could have just walked in and snapped his wife's neck, but he didn't. There's something more conniving, which will always be more disturbing to me. Even Renee tries to convince John Connor she's back for good. And I mean that as a compliment because I absolutely love Edward Furlong. I mean, come on. Pet Cemetery 2, Terminator 2, Brain Scan, T2, Battle Cross Time, the only true Terminator sequel, American History X, Detroit Rock City. This guy's great. They always say, like, the saying is, like, don't work with kids or animals. Um, I was a kid, so I say that. This whole thing is, is an interesting change. And yes, they don't do a lot with it. But I enjoy the gray area this sort of lives in. And of course, having Clancy Brown as the second lead was the best decision made for the sequel. And thank God, they kept up with the main accent. And though I have never been, I, I really hope everyone there talks like this. Putting it plainly, Mr. Hall, you're the drifter. There's all the time crossing back and forth on that road. It's luck around now. Prom, homecoming, all nine yards. Guess I'll never be lucky. Hell, I ain't married anyone. When it's all said and done, I am not trying to convince you that Pet Cemetery 2 is superior to the original. I know it has its fans, but my issue here is that people look at 2 and immediately discard it. It's a solid sequel that took a tonal shift in a more rock and roll direction. And I like it better myself, but I won't deny the following that the original movie has amassed. Part 2 is just a better time, and Mary Lambert spends the whole thing going for broke. It goes stranger, it goes weirder, and I'll always support that type of story. And hold up, the fact that nobody talks about how half of this movie is set on Halloween is absurd. I mean, the whole thing is set around cemeteries, so it does make sense. I mean, Pet Cemetery 2 is basically a holiday movie set around the dead returning to life, set to a 90s score with a great color palette, and starring, of course, a king among men, the Kurgan himself, motherfucking Clancy Brown. No brain, no pain. You take an actor of his caliber, give him carte blanche, and what do you get? You get one hell of a good time. And all of this stands as a refreshing reminder that movies could at one time deviate in interesting directions and do things out of the box. It makes me uh, yearn for a time where these types of creative shifts 